There is nothing more frustrating than robbing yourself of distance off a tee by having an out to in swing path and hitting a big, horrible slice, just like that one, potentially even in the water on the opening hole. That is not what you want, guys. And sometimes people find it very difficult to understand that making a few changes can help your game. It can help you hit you straighter, it can help you hit the ball longer, and it can generally help you play good golf. Hi everyone, my name is James, and welcome back to Get Good at Golf on this channel. We aim to help you get good at golf just one day at a time. And in today's video, I want to show you how you can not only get your swing path a little bit more neutral, how you can hit straighter golf shots, how you can hit longer golf shots, but also how you can get that swing path coming more from the inside so you can hit the elusive big high draw that everyone wants to hit off the tee. And you can definitely start to see that is not only going longer, but it's also going a lot straighter as well. So it's gone too far, Chris, for going in the bunker. So what do I need to do to get that swing path coming more from the inside and stop coming over the top, which so many coaches and so many golfers say that we are doing. An over the top motion just means that from the top of the backswing, my first movement is generally with the upper body, with the arms, the shoulders, the hands, the club, and coming more outside here. You'll see that shaft plane is working very vertically. It's working very steep. And the first thing we want to do is try and shallow that shaft plane out, you'll see there that that is working more horizontally. You're never gonna get it horizontal, but it feels as though you do. That gets the club behind you and allows you to attack the ball more from the inside. That's one way of doing it, one way of making sure that you can hit a nice big high draw. You think of someone like Sergio Garcia, who from the top of the backswing feels like the hands come down here and then he squares the club face up with a very fast rotating body. But another way of doing this is making sure that your sequencing is correct. So if I load up to the top of the backswing again, I want to feel as though my lower body is starting the downswing. That's the trigger move. I want my hips to move first, then my torso, then my shoulders, then my arms. And it is a race to the ball. We need to make sure that the lower body wins that race by kicking off the sequence for the downswing. See, if I have a sequence that is totally out of sequence, it looks a little bit like this. And that was actually quite a fast swing, but it wasn't a powerful swing. If we have a look at the numbers that this gives us, you'll see that we had a ball speed of just 79 miles per hour, a backspin of 5,000, which again, that's robbing you of distance. There's way too much backspin there and a side spin of 3,300. That is an epic amount of side spin. If I have a correct looking sequence, I should be able to load up to the top of the backswing, start with that lower body and have the club lagging behind me the whole time. I'm gonna rotate a lot better. I'm gonna rotate a lot faster. I'm just gonna hit longer shots, hopefully like this. You can see there that's gone a little bit left and this is something that Chris is gonna help us with because my bad shot, I actually come too far. Oh, that's on the desert as well. I actually come too far from the inside Chris, would you like to help us with coming too far from the inside and finding that elusive middle ground that everybody wants? So you can see there, guys, that is a much better golf swing. The sequence is a lot better. It carried a lot further. That's carried 270 yards. We have a look at the numbers. The ball speed is up around 150. Still not a massive amount of speed, but the spin rate has dropped dramatically, sub 2,000 which is certainly going to help you hit longer drives. And that side spin is just 194. That is what we are looking for, as little side spin as possible. Now, guys, if you come too far from the inside, that could cause you a huge issue. And this is where Chris is going to help you now and see if you can find that elusive middle ground to hit straight, long golf shots. So guys, all the things there that James has spoke about, we need to work on, but how can we give you a couple of drills that is gonna help you improve that and get you getting your path a little bit more from the inside? So like James said, obviously the biggest thing and the most common shot we see with amateur golfers is the slice. And it is that motion from coming over the top. But a couple of things that I see from people at setup, which is killing them and which is encouraging all of that. First thing when we see at setup is people the right hand's on top or the shoulders are feeling like, right, I need to get those square, that's square, the club face is now square, but my arms and my shoulder alignment is way left to start with. And this is gonna dictate your swing path. So you could make a great swing, you could do exactly what James said, you could load nicely here, but if you return to exactly where you started from, that club is still gonna be working down, it's gonna be working across. We're gonna hit the lower one, 
It might just. I think you hit that Abu Dhabi last time we played. Get, in get into the water. I've hit a lot of water on that golf course. So we want to correct that. So we need to make sure that your arm alignment is good to start with. So to get good arm alignment, we've got to make sure the grip's correct. So we've got to make sure we've got a nice neutral grip where with your left hand for a right-handed golfer, your thumb is just sitting down the right-hand side. We can see two knuckles. When we bring your right hand on, we want to see your thumb just on that left-hand side. You'll see if James goes now from down the line, we can see that the arms are now matching. You can't see my left arm because my right arm and left arm are matching. We're not now over the top and we've got this arm very straight. So it's a lot more relaxed from here. This is now going to allow you to, again, get into that position where the club's going to work a little bit more behind you. And then from this position, we want to feel like this bicep stays connected to your chest for longer. What we see is, like James said, gets very steep. This arm works off. We get the cover drive or we get the chicken wing coming off. And that, again, is leaving that club face wide open. There's not a lot we can do from there. It's certainly not a powerful move. So we've got this arm now a little bit more relaxed. We've got to the top. And as we come down, we now want to feel like this stays connected to the chest. That will drop the club a little bit behind and then we can feel like we can release that into the golf ball and start to get that ball working with a different shape. So a little draw there. You can even do shots like that on the driving range, tee a ball up. We're not bothered about distance. We're just trying to start to see that shape happening and ticking a couple of those boxes. So once we've got the control of getting that club face turning, yeah, one thing we can do to encourage our path to the right and not across is get our feet a little bit closed. So we see from your everyday golfer, your slicer of the golf ball, once you start slicing the ball, what do we do? The main thing we do is we go, right, I know I'm going to slice it 20 yards, so if I aim a little bit further left, it'll come back to the middle. All that's doing, guys, is making your path even further left. We're then leaving the face open. We're adding more spin. It's actually going to go further to the right. It's going to be much harder to get the ball to start on line. And if you do get the elusive square face, we're then going to hit it 100 yards left, just like this. Oh, but you aimed left because you slice it. I'm a slicer, but I'm now oh, in the bushes well, on the left. We're in a world of pain. I'll here. take a breakfast ball. Oh. James had one of those on, uh, on the trip last week. Yeah, so I, I did actually. I thought I'd yeah. bring, bring that up. Good news. When, he, when in Rome. He did find it. So what we want you to do, guys, is once you've got your setup on your grip, your arm alignment correct, we're going to just drop this right foot back. So we're going to get into a neutral setup, just drop that right foot back, and get everything now aiming out to the right. That's a slicer's biggest fear. If I aim to the right, I'm going to hit it way to the right. If we now tick the boxes with getting your arms more relaxed and into that position, keeping this left arm on your chest for longer, you will see now I can get that ball starting up the right, and drawing back nicely. It's an unbelievable shot to carry that water, by the way. Oh! Ooh, referee, stop there, stop, stop, stop. Oof. We've held on for dear life. But you can see that ball fight started right, it's drawn back because I've got the correct setup now. I'm now letting that arm stay connected to my chest. My sequencing's better, but I'm not trying to force that. I'm not trying to turn the hands over. We've got the setup correct. So do it at slow speed. Get into this setup, get your alignment stick down there. Don't forget, guys, the club face doesn't want to aim right, so we're not trying to say, right, if I'm aiming right, get the club face right, because you will hit a push straight into the water. So get that club face slightly close to where you are aimed, and then we can swing nice and easy. And you can see, we've changed that shape now. We can commit to it going up the right, and that's not carried as far as James's, but we're trying to bed that in. We're trying to get that swing. We're trying to get that curvature. If you start to see it overturning, we can just bring this alignment a little bit more back towards neutral. If we can get a little bit more back to neutral, you might start to see a 5, 10-yard draw. You might see a 5-yard draw. You might see a 20-yard draw. Whichever ball flight suits you the best and which one you're the most confident with, that's what we want to start to see. But these basic tips, guys, of set up and what you can do at the driving range is going to help you be more confident, try and get rid of that slice. And going into next season, we don't just have to buy a new driver with a different weight system and just hope that's going to turn your massive slice 
into a perfect draw. So guys, there's some good tips for you. Hopefully that's gonna help you get good at golf and we will see you again at the same time tomorrow.